Sorry, let me yes. Okay, hi. So today I'm presenting on uh, reactive programming. Um, so I developed my app, YoMap, with this, uh, this reactive framework. And um, the idea is it allows you to bookmark places uh, on your map, which I thought was, uh, was a simple idea. And how it works is you could have thousands of places in your app but uh, the map would filter and display the places in the current map region uh, as you zoom and pan around the map. Um, so this is a rough diagram of how it works behind the scene. Um, the view model on the left, it manages the data, which uh, in this case are the map places. And those places are initially uh, Start, sorted into a quad tree, so uh, it's more optimal to filter, to do a lot of filtering in real time. Um, and when you change the map region or the filters, the, the view model would um, send the updated place annotations to the view controller. And within the view controller itself, the map card and the map view would sync, would sync up so that they highlight the same selected place. So that is to say there's a lot of moving parts uh, and before I use reactive programming, it, it got a little too complex at one point. So that's when I thought I would, you know, I would try to pick up this framework that I read about. Um, to use a simpler example, we, uh, let's think about how to implement online search. So um, we have a search box and we want the search results to update as the user types in the search query. Um, first of all, we can observe the search box value with a delegate function, uh, like user did update search query. And with each, with each value that comes in, if the user types very fast, you want to control uh, the, um, the number of the rate of request that you send to the to the network, right? So you you implement some form of throttling. Uh, I'm just going to go through uh, quickly this part. Uh, so we want to implement throttling. We want to check if the search query has changed from the previous query, uh, and we want to create a new network request every time the query changes. So. Um, to, okay, so we have a delegate function to uh, did complete requests so that when the, when the search request is completed uh, and you receive the search response, uh, this function would check that uh, the current request, check that the, the, the data is from the current request. So we can ignore the previous searches. Uh, and then we can update the search results. But to implement this, uh, all this functionality, we need to create uh, three, at least three variables. So we have a last request time to keep track of the, the, the time window between each request so we can implement throttling. We have a uh, previous query to check if the, the previous query is different from the current one. We have uh, current requests to, to check if the, the, the data coming in is from the current search request. So, so we, have, um, we have to keep track of all this. But if we were to implement this uh, the reactive way, let's see how we would do it. Um, so if you use reactive Cocoa, the, the text field would have, a, would have a property called continuous text values. We can use this signal and we apply a number of operators to it. So um, the first one is ignore repeats so that uh, we don't use this. If, there's a, if the value that comes in is a duplicate of the previous one, uh, it doesn't, we don't use that. We just skip it. Uh, and we can apply a trotter with a window of 0.3 seconds and then we apply flat map. Uh, this is a bit complicated but you'll see later how it works. Basically, um, it will only use the latest search request. And finally, you attach uh, an observer to the, to the end of the chain 
to observe the, the latest value and update the search results. So um, when I was starting on Reactive Cocoa, it was difficult to wrap my head around these concepts. And I find the best way to learn is with code examples, and that's what we're going to do. So um, if we have time at the end, we can, uh, we can create a simple app which would uh, show you how the different parts of Reactive Cocoa come together. What is Reactive Cocoa? All right. Um, uh, Reactive Cocoa started out as an Objective-C framework, and it has since uh, migrated to Swift. And if you looked at the GitHub repo, it's, there's two repositories. So one is Reactive Swift. That's the core functionality. Uh, you, don't, you don't need to create an iOS app with, uh, I mean, you can create all sorts of apps with, with Swift nowadays. So that's what Reactive Swift is for. But if you were to create an iOS app, uh, you want Reactive, the Reactive Cocoa library to, because it provides uh, extensions to the different iOS and Mac classes. Um, let's look at the definition provided by the, the GitHub repo. The, the important words here are declarative and the concept of streams. So we have already seen in the example just now, uh, the first example for implementing online search that's a very imperative way of um, programming, uh, meaning you have to keep track of all the state changes. You have to create, declare variables to keep track of this. Uh, you need to tell the program, you need to describe the program how, to, how things work. But uh, Reactive Swift is declarative. So instead of how things work, you describe what things are, what it is. Uh, we have another definition here from Wikipedia, uh, what reactive programming is. Um, so first of all, reactive programming is perfect for asynchronous uh, operations and tasks. Um, so anyway, we, uh, we have the concept of data streams come up again. Uh, and as for inferred dependency, um, we'll, we'll see this in the, the demo later, like when you chain opera uh, operators together, you can see the flow of the cause and effect, and it's a very. Um, it makes things. It makes it very easy to read the code and understand what it does. And finally, we have the um, uh, the reactive aspect of the of this programming. Uh, we also see how uh, how how it is in the in the in the code later. Um, okay. So, but before we go into how it works, let's think about how we pass data within an iOS app. Um, so these are, there's key value observing uh, which we use to, which we can use to observe changes uh, uh, in, a in a variable. We, there's delegation which we can use to pass data between view controllers. And we can subscribe to notifications to be notified when an event occurs. Um, Okay, I didn't add this in, but we also have closures for callback, fun uh, callback functions when we, when we want to implement asynchronous tasks. Uh, and I also want to talk a bit about promises because Reactive Cocoa is like an advanced version of it. Uh, you can chain operators and pass values before they have been fulfilled, which is also used for asynchronous tasks. So, um, when we talk about streams, this is kind of how, uh, this is a good visualization of it. And this actually comes from another programming language called uh, Max. Um, it's used by um, uh, interactive artists uh, because they work a lot with audio streams and video streams. So um, a lot of times you can't control the, 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 the individual, the discrete bits, bits and bytes of the, of the stream. So reactive programming is the way to go. Uh, so here you can see like um, there's different streams being combined. Uh, the streams are being transformed, and then finally it reaches uh, it reaches a, an observer that does something with the, the the stream of data. Okay, but um, with reactive Cocoa, um, so this this concept of streams is uh, is the base of reactive Cocoa, or reactive Swift. Um, is used to manipulate and pass data. 
Um, so a stream represents a sequence of uh, values over time. That's, that's a bit abstract because it's extremely flexible. Um, instead of a variable, we can create a stream and then attach observers to, to receive and do something with the, the latest value from it. So, um, so the, the top part, uh, that represents a, uh, a stream, which is different, va um, not necessarily different values, but values over time. And that, that vertical line, it represents uh, a completed fill or interrupted event. Um, so the observer can not only receive any new values, it can also receive, it can also be notified when the stream has terminated and then you can do something when that happens. Okay, the way to create streams in uh, reactive Cocoa um, is, is by using these three, three classes, it's the signal, signal producer and mutable property. And um, which one you choose depends on the situation. So uh, let's just let's get into that. Okay, but first we need to first we need to create a playground. Let me just start up Xcode. Okay, I'm I'm curious how many of you have uh, heard of Reactive Coco or Reactive Programming. How many of you have tried it? Tried it? Uh, use it in production? Okay. How many of, I mean, you're all here because you're interested in how it works, right? Your screen, you need to be right. Yes, I need to. Oh. Sorry. Okay, so. Um, the best way to learn Reactive Cocoa is actually through a playground where you can experiment with, uh, with the different classes. Is it connected? Okay. Okay, something's wrong. Um, just to give you a quick idea of how to set it up, you can read about this on the on the repository itself. Um, you 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 need to put the playground in a in a workspace, and in the workspace you need to add the reactive Coco, uh, reactive Swift, and the, the result libraries, the, the project the project files. So and before before you run your playground, uh, you need to build this one by one. So you could select like result. And then you you build it control uh, command B, uh, and then you build Reactive Swift followed by Reactive Coco. Uh, once you have done that, uh, your playground should be able to to read the the syntax. So like you get this, uh, you get the autocomplete, and if you run it, it should work. Okay, it'll work. Um, all right, so let's begin with the, the signal class. Um, the signal class, it allows you to, most of the time, uh, you, you can think of the signal as a, as a river. So it, it was there long before you go to the river, and when you fish in it, any fish that has swam, has swam downstream, are no longer accessible. So the moment you attach an observer to the signal, um, that's when, that from, th from that point onwards, you receive the future values, but you can't access any past values. Okay, 
Um, if you come from, uh, say, Rx, uh, so there's another library, Rx Swift, or and other Rx libraries, uh, signals are kind of the, 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 the equivalent of hot observables. Okay, so that's to say the, the signal, it often belongs to ongoing parts of your program, like uh, views or controls or some kind of global shared object, like a, like a store. So they don't produce side effects when they send values, and you typically observe them to be notified <coughs> of uh, events or changed values. We'll so I have a, a number of examples here to, uh, to demonstrate what I just talked about. Okay, so this works. Uh, look, if you look at the first example, observing a signal. Uh, so this is the basic of how, uh, of how, okay, I'm using, a, um, you have to attach uh, an, an observer, and in this case, I'm using a, a closure. So uh, I'm using a mutable property to manipulate the, the values of the signal. So here I've uh, I changed the value to one, followed by two, and then three, and the observer would uh, ah, zoom in. Yes, I forgot about this. How's this? Okay, so so once you when um, the observer would would get the the value from the signal, as you can see, so it prints out one, two, three. Uh, in the next example, we are using map, which is an operator to, uh, to manipulate the, the signal. So this map function, which is uh, just multiplying the, the value by 100, it is applied to every value that, that's sent by the stream. So here again, I'm, I'm uh, sending the same values, 1, 2, 3, but the, the values received by the observer is one, 100, 200, and 300. Okay, you can also use another operator called filter. And so it's, I mean, you should be familiar with, with the, there's a, the, the, the filter function for sequences, right? So it's doing the same thing here, but with the, the stream. So here I'm sending the numbers one to six, but when it passes through the filter, uh, it will only accept those that are divisible by two. So what I get from in the observer, what the observer receives from the stream, is actually only two and four and six. You can also combine sig uh, signals uh, with the operator combine latest. So I have two two different signals here, the left one and the right one. Um, and this is what I set for the, for the values. And in the observer, I'm, I have access to the left, the left value and the right value. So I can do whatever I want with it. So here I'm just printing them out left and right. Um, I think, I, I know this is a bit complicated, but uh, I'll upload the playground and you can you can uh, experiment with it. Uh, it'll make more sense. But um, so, like what I said just now about signals, like how do you use how do you use signals? Um, when you import Reactive Cocoa, uh, you can you notice that uh, text fields, a lot of controls, they have this, uh, they have they have a reactive property now, and for the text field, you have uh, continuous text values. So this is providing um, any updated value as a, in the form of a signal. I can't run this because this is all iOS code, but you can look at it, but it should be, I mean, you can look at the code here and try to understand. So um, it's, it's similar to using a delegate, the delegate function of a text field. Basically, what, whenever the, the, the text field changes, you, can, you have access to the, the new value. But um, as opposed to, say, um, the, the delegate function, 
you can do a lot more using operators. So I can actually do something like combine previous. And then now I have access to the previous value as well as the current. So I can compare them and do something when they're similar or when they're the same or when they're not. Um, okay, and then here's another scenario, which is uh, notifications. You can, um, the not notification center has a, has, has a notification signal. Uh, all you need to do is uh, specify the notification name and, and then uh, you can, you'll receive the, the, not the notification object in the observer. So again, you can do something really cool with this. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm using the take operator. So uh, it will take the first value, meaning the, when the app enters the background, it will just execute the code within this closure once, and, and then the stream will end. Uh, the next example we have the we have user defaults, uh, and we are um, we are using the key the KVO um, aspect of user defaults to uh, to to turn to turn it into a stream and do something with it. So um, if you have a settings screen in your app and and it uh, when a user changes something, it changes the user defaults. You can immediately get the changes in this. Ob in this observable, in this observer, and you can do something with it. And it's, it's a lot less code to write. Um, you also, okay, the last one is, uh, is a replacement of delegate functions. So um, for the delegation pattern, usually you need to, to declare a protocol, and, and the, child, the child controller would use the, the delegate function, right? So, but in this case, we are just uh, we are creating a, a signal manually using <coughs> using something called the using the pipe method of the signal class. Um, so, this is the this is where we declare did finish editing pipe, and when the done button is tapped, uh, we want to send we want to send a value. Um, and then in your in your root your root view controller, uh, you can simply just use the edit view controller's uh, did finish editing signal to um, to be no to be up notified whenever uh, it sends a value. So um, probably not uh, very obvious here, but just try out the playground. Okay, um, the, other, the other class used to create streams is the signal producer. And this is one of the most confusing aspects of reactive programming because, um, okay, so going back to the other reactive library, uh, sometimes they refer to observables as hot, sometimes as cold. And the cold aspect of uh, observables is referring to, to this. You can contain side effects uh, within a signal producer, but um, when you create the, the signal producer with the side effects in it, the side effects are, the, the code for the side effects are not executed. They're only executed the moment you use the start any start function of the signal producer. So, I mean, let's just look at the playground and and see how it works. Uh, signal producer. Okay, so so the first example we we have is uh, for asynchronous operations. Okay, okay. So I'll try to write this up. Um, uh, you have an asynchronous operation here, and okay, so. This is, uh, this is one of the ways you initialize a signal producer. Um, you, have, uh, you use a closure, and in the closure, you are provided the observer and the lifetime. So what you want to do is uh, you want to put your code in here, uh, and your code should generate a value. And when it does, you use the observer to send this value from the asynchronous uh, 
task. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using a timer so that, uh, so that I get a value two seconds later. And then I'll send it. So, um, so when the timer starts, it will print starting timer, as you can see here. Uh, but, but then it runs the other, the other examples first. And two seconds later, you get timer ended, which is, uh, which is what we put in our observer. observer. So again, so like what I said just now, uh, signal producers are cold because they don't execute the side effects. These are the side effects. They don't execute the side effects in the initializer until they are started. So if I, if I run this again, you, you're not going to even see starting timer. And um, you, you, you realize that this is useful because you can create functions that return signal producers. And then um, you, you, well, it, you, you can see later, I think. Um, so you can also delay a function call with the delay operator. Uh, you can convert a sequence into a stream and then make use of operators and then collect to get back the, the sequence. Um, and this is something you might use the most often because, okay, so asynchronous operations, especially network requests, they're kind of a pain. But so what I've done here is uh, I'm using the iTunes API to search for these three keywords. Um, I, I turned the, this, this array of uh, queries, I converted it to a stream. So it will send the chain followed by Nikes, followed by formation. And then it will run through the flat map operator, but with a, with a merge uh, option. Um, and within here, we are creating, we are actually creating another signal producer. We are returning the signal producer, which contains the asynchronous task. Um, so basically what this will do is it will run these three uh, queries all at once, generate the three search queries, and when the response is, uh, is completed, it will, it will map, it will do something with it, it will print out the results. So, I mean, you can see here uh, that it is generated the results. Okay, so we don't have a lot of time and there's one last uh, class that generates uh, a stream, which is the mutable property. Um, you can think of it as a, as a wrapper around the, the signal class. So it, it does a lot more because you can access the current value uh, and you can produce a signal producer from it. So these are the different operators you use. Um, the first line, it basically transforms the, the values in the stream. But the interesting parts are actually the operators that uh, the second line and the third one, they can actually manipulate the stream. You can combine two different streams together. Uh, you, can, you can take, if, there, if an error has occurred, you can do, you can retry very easily. Um, okay, since we don't have a lot of time, I'm just going to show you the, the demo. So, let's see. So this is what uh, this is what we we will do if we have time. But uh, let's see. Let me... What it does is uh, basically it's, it's using the MapKit API to search for places. And every time you type something, it will generate the, the search. So if I search for... Oh, sorry. So you can see the search request actually happens with each keyword we typed. And there's some form of throttling happen so we don't uh, exceed the API rate limit. Okay, um, 
I actually wanted to use this as an example of how uh, how you implement MVVM, the, the software architecture together with Reactive Coco. But uh, let's just look at it quickly. Reactive. Because uh, one of the hardest thing I um, when I started learning Reactive Coco was I didn't know how to use it together with uh, view controllers. How to um, like what whether to use a signal a signal producer or mutable property. So even though we don't have much time, I'll upload the, this to a GitHub repository and you can look through it. But basically, you have a, the view controller. And you have a view model which which uh, which is which manages the the data and all the logic associated with the data, so it's really great for UI table view controllers. Uh, here, the view the view model is quite simple. It has a let's see. It has a sections property and. This is the this is basically the data for each table cell. Um, we when you initialize it, it set up the bindings. So uh, there's a um, search query property which gets the 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 text the search bar value from the view controller. Uh, so here. Uh, view model dot search query property. This is how we bind the uh, search bars continuous text values to to the property, so that the view model has access to it. And so whenever the whenever you type a character in the search bar, um, it will it will be it will be emitted from the pass query signal. And and here we, we are just doing the same thing like in the previous examples. We are throttling it. We are replacing the the query value with a with an asynchronous task that returns a, a a value. And then we we are also catching any errors that result from the the from the search res, res, search query. And we are we are catching the error and skipping it altogether. Uh, and then. Once you have the the search query, you just display it in the. We are using the search. We are updating the sections property, which uh, which the view controller has access to. So here, view model dot section signal. We attach an observer to reload the table. So, um, very roughly, this is how this is how it works. If you use Reactive Coco to, in a in an iOS app. Okay. So do we have time for one question or two? I think you overused that. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm sorry, but yeah, you can have any of them. So uh, okay, thank you, Benjamin. Chia. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you.